Biggest mistakes made by house cleaners. And can you prevent yourself from making the same mistakes? That's what we're talking about today. Hi there, I'm Angela Brown, and this is Ask a House Cleaner. This is a show where you get to ask a house cleaning question, and I get to help you find an answer. Now, today's show is brought to us by Savvy Cleaner Training. And over there, we just released a course on worksheets and checklists, and the difference between a professional worksheet and a checklist that a customer writes up for you. It is updated and revised for 2020 with a QR code, and there are some secrets in there that we've never before revealed that are part of that course, and we show you with exact word tracks on how to sell your services to the customer. So check it out at SavvyCleaner.com. All right, on to today's show. This is part two of the biggest mistakes that house cleaners make so that you don't have to reinvent the wheel and you can learn from the mistakes of others. All right, another biggest mistake made by house cleaners is taking on a business partner because you thought they were gonna do half the business and they were gonna come up with half the money and they were gonna do half the work. All right, it very rarely ever ends up that way. Usually the person that starts the business is the one that carries the weight of the business and they're the ones that are doing the contracts and they're the ones that come up with the money they're the ones that come up with the good ideas. And there's usually someone riding their coattails. And so it gets really frustrating when you think that you're all in with someone else and they think, hey, I'm coming along for the ride. And I've seen more house cleaning business partnerships fall apart because just like we have our agreements with our customers, there are no agreements up front with the partnerships that say, here's exactly what you're going to bring to the table. Here's exactly what I'm going to bring. Here's exactly how much money we're both going to bring. Here's exactly how much money we're both going to take home. And because those are not clarified from the start, so many businesses just fall apart and they get sour and ugly. And then what normally happens is one or both parties will destroy and sabotage the business so the other person doesn't get everything. And in the end, instead of having a really surviving, thriving business, you have no business at all. And then you get a sour business owner. And a lot of times it's both of them. They'll go off and they'll spin off in their own directions. And then they start their own house cleaning businesses and they do now what they wish they knew. So business partnerships, be very, very careful if you don't know exactly what you're doing. And if you do decide to take on a business partner, make sure it's all in writing, that it's all legal, and that the expectations are very clear. All right, number five, biggest mistakes made by house cleaners. One house cleaner said the biggest mistake for me was hiring anyone that showed up for an interview. <laughs> Yes, we've all been there. We were desperate for help. We put an ad in the paper, someone showed up and we hired them, right? But along with hiring, what's happening is you are bringing on an extension of your business. And so when you hire a person and you bring them in, what you're saying is my business is super important to me and I want to carry on this culture throughout my business, throughout all of the employees that we have, throughout everybody that's working for our company for all of our clients so that we have this great big empire that we're building together. When you just hire somebody that walks in and you don't know what their, their background is and you don't know what their work ethic is and you don't know what their morality system is, is this an honest person? Is this a person that is trustworthy and reliable and dependable? I've hired some people that weren't dishonest per se, but they were not really great workers and they were lazy and they kind of just stretched out the time as, as far as they possibly could. And then they wouldn't show up when they didn't want to. There were issues, right? And so one of the things that we learn as house cleaners, and this is kind of a reinventing the wheel thing, if you don't really pay attention to hiring and firing procedures, but without very strict hiring and firing procedures, it's easy to like, oh, I really like this person. Oh, this is a single mom. Oh, they need the work. They're going to help me. And you want to believe in the best in people because as house cleaners, we are people pleasers. And so it's instinctive for us to meet people and want to help them. And so we see people that need help and we go, oh yes, I can help you. Well, the reality is if they're not a good fit for your business and they're not going to help you back, it's a bad fit for, for employment. And so it's, it, this is a trial and error thing, but you end up getting to the point where you start recognizing some of the symptoms of people who are just on the job hunt, who are not good workers and they can't hold down a job for certain reasons. So just hiring the first person that comes in, I love you for doing it. I think it's awesome that you're trying to help somebody out and you're trying to give them a chance, but it's a very tight screening process and needs to be because they are representing your brand. They are an extension of your business. And everybody that meets this one employee is going to think that your entire business operates that way. So it is very important 
that you have a process in place and that you don't just out of desperation hire the first person that walks through the door. All right, number six, taking complaints personally instead of tactically. Oh, this is a really, really tough one. Okay, as house cleaners, this is where it gets interesting. As house cleaners, we want to bring our best to the customer. We want to give it our all. Everything that we do in house cleaning is a touch of our magic. And so it is an extension of us. And then the customer comes in and they're like, oh, it's not very good. And then you get really discouraged, like, oh my goodness, it's not good enough. What did I do wrong? And then you start taking it really personally and you're like, well, I think the customer hates me. Or worse yet, the customer doesn't say anything. Maybe they're just in a bad mood for some reason. And then you start thinking in your head like, oh no, do they not like my work? Are they disillusioned with the fact that I'm here? Did I get sloppy? Did I forget something? What are they not telling me? And house cleaners will second guess themselves. All right, so the good news is this. Stop it. Stop it already because that's what the checklist is for. If you are following a worksheet, you're following a checklist, then every single thing you do is done the exact same way every single time. It's called a system. Once you have a system down, you can stop the guesswork. You can stop worrying and wondering, am I pleasing the customer? Am I doing enough? Am I doing the right job? Is the customer happy? The customer is happy unless they call you back. When you don't get any callbacks for two or three or five years, then maybe jump on the phone and call the customer and just say, hey, just checking in. Are we still good? I haven't heard from you in a very long time. There's no feedback. Are we still good? Because if you're doing an excellent job and they're getting excellent results, you're never going to hear from the customers, right? But when a customer calls you, this is a chance for you to fix your system. Whatever it is that is not making them happy, this is a chance for you to fix it. Ask yourself, is this a high maintenance customer? Or are they just being weird? Or is this some place I've fallen down in my business? And if I've fallen down, can I actually fix this with all my customers so that I don't have this problem ever again? So that's a mistake that house cleaners make is they just take it personally and they feel sad without ever fixing it when it's just a tactical feedback. All right, number seven, giving discounts to attract customers. Ooh, this one really rubs me the wrong way and I hate this for this reason. There are a whole lot of house cleaners that don't feel like they're gonna be able to get any business unless they offer a discount of some sort. And so I see this all the time. Hey, $50 off your first cleaning or your second cleaning or whatever it is. As savvy cleaner, we don't do any discounts whatsoever at any time for any reason. We don't have a discounted service. We have an excellent service at a very reasonable price. And it's always very reasonable and it's always excellent. And so it's the value that we're selling, not the discount. I learned this from Costco. Costco has nice vitamins and they are discounted every few months. And I do not buy them except on the months where they are discounted. And I don't know why, because I need them at other times of the year, but because they are discounted, I say to myself, oh, I can save $4 on that one bottle if I wait until it goes on sale. They have trained me to wait for the sale when at any other time I would just go in and I would just buy whatever it is I needed, right? If it was the same price all of the time, I would just buy it whenever. And so we train our customers either to buy from us on value or to buy from us on price. And if you start your business and start a relationship with a client based on discounts for as long as you clean for them, they're going to always be looking for the next discount. And so if they don't feel like they're getting quite the value that, that they're paying for, either you're overcharging, you're not doing a very good job, or you've trained them to look for the discounts. So I can see how that's a mistake lots of house cleaners fall into is because they are desperate for business. They offer discounts to lure in the customer when instead they should be selling on value. All right, that is it for today. Come back tomorrow. We have more awesome ideas that are based on mistakes house cleaners made and how you can avoid them. If you found this helpful, please pass it on to a friend. If we've earned your subscription, please subscribe. And until we meet again, leave the world a cleaner place than when you found it. Thank you.